Welcome to the Academy of Photography. Is that a gun in your pocket or you're just happy to see me? I'm Christian Tudor and today I would like to share some thoughts with you, especially with those ones who are wishing to make money with a camera and turn photography into a business. I would like to start with a question first. Do you think that quality of your photos are the main driver for success in your photography business? I will show you unfortunately how this is not necessarily the case. One of the reasons I have started the photography business was that I have uh, seen other professional photographers work and I was absolutely appalled by the low quality and they were actually charging money for it. I can give you an example before I started my business I attended an event for a, for a friend and actually I saw a guy taking photos and obviously he was a professional photographer when I found out he was making six times more than I was doing in terms of hourly rate I actually got a little bit upset especially after a few weeks when I when I saw the results I told to myself I gotta try this I definitely can do better than him in terms of photos and in terms of business if you love photography do not fall into the trap of believing that your photos are better than others and that will guarantee a success in business nothing could be further from the truth the best tool for your success in photography is not your camera it is your phone one thing I was lucky enough to realize was that I needed to train my business and selling skills. Taking great photographs was not enough. I have never looked back as any education is a good education and one favor you can do it to yourself is learn how to detach from your product and try to sell it like a salesman. Try to put, step into the shoes of a salesman. You need to treat photography like a business if you want to succeed and this is how you can set up a foundation for business success. I was shy at the beginning and I was feeling embarrassed asking for money for my photographs. I had a lot of difficulties selling myself. I have realized in time that I needed to train myself into becoming a better salesman first and uh, so I have read a, the book of sales or the bible of the salesman or whatever you call it. That was the best idea I, I had and I have learned how people think. I have learned about buyers perceptions and behaviors. I have learned what to say and what not to say, what questions to ask and how, when to shut up and when to press button. I started to apply slowly my techniques and all I can say in that one in one or two, two years I have built up reflex and selling process is a walk in the park now. I know when to expect and I know when to let go. Today I would like just to skim the surface in terms of selling for, for photographers. What I'm gonna share with you today is no new for those of you who actually have some formal training in sales but if you love photography and you are watching this it is more likely you have an artistic side which is in conflict with the pure and cold truth of money. I have seen many movies where the salesman is portrayed, portrayed as a sleazy bastard or a liar willing to say anything to take people's money. But despite the fact I have enjoyed those movies, a good salesman is nothing like that. Let's go through a few tips that might actually help you achieve a business success in photography. First of all, you always need to be honest and professional. You need to present yourself very well. I have seen photographers in various shoots dressed like they are after drunken parties and I thought that was the most unprofessional approach in business. People like people who look after themselves and appreciate true professionals. The most expensive photographer I know dresses up in a business suit with tie and all the accessories. It's like a, uh, it's like a man coming from the Wall Street. He doesn't look like a photographer. My suggestion is don't wear t-shirts, jeans and shorts. Second, you cannot sell to everyone, you have to understand that. You have to get used to the fact that people will say no to you and there is only one small percentage of people who will say yes. You need to see the word no as a path to the next yes and you need to think in numbers. You need to speak to a certain number of people until you get the one who will be willing to employ you for your services. It's a numbers game, don't ever forget that. People are different. You can expect the unexpected. I have got clients employing me because I am good, my style, my personality, but these guys are not necessarily the majority. Other people employ me because I am in the right place, at the right time, in their way. Some people employ me because I am tall and blonde, and some others do not employ me because I am tall and blonde. Some people employ me because I am expensive, some people employ me because I am cheap. It depends how you look at it. Everyone have their own perception. I was amazed to discover clients employed me without actually seeing my work. I just happened to be in their way when they were ready to buy photography. This is one of the cold and core truth and valuable lessons leading to the next very important tip in business success. Music 
make sure you talk only with people wanting to buy photography. Talking with people not interested, it is impossible and a big waste of time. I had a market stall for some time in a monthly local market, which has no necessarily a particular subject, and I had thousands of people coming by, but they were just people on the street having a stroll, having a coffee and whatever. The rate was very low and I have decided to let it go and I stopped going there. My word of advice, try to speak only with people interested to buy photography. When you are trying to convince people to employ you, do not tell them how good you are. This is a very uh, base selling technique. You need to ask more questions and listen to what people have to say and what they want. You will be surprised that if they are looking for a superhero, you can just say that you just happen to be a superhero and you have a better chance to be employed. The most successfully clo deals I closed were through selling interviews when I was actually not talking too much, but I let the potential clients talk. Never ask questions that can be answered with yes or no. For example, if I want to establish a meeting, my question is, when would be the best time for you to meet? This Friday or this Saturday? I never ask, do you want to meet this weekend? The client can say no and he probably will say no. It is very easy to say no, no to a person in an email or, or on a phone. Learn from this and try to get people face to face as you will increase your chances to close a deal. So I always try to get people in the studio and talking face to face. I will give you one example. I talk with a lot of people on the phone and uh, I know that I have to speak with 20 to 30 people to actually uh, find someone interested. But in my studio, the numbers that actually close deals is probably 8 in 10. Just remember, talking on the phone is not going to help your case. Sending emails is actually worse. Another piece of advice is try to offer value and never discount. If someone wants a lower price, just let them go. Instead of giving them 10%, you are better off including more for the same price. For example, I would rather include an enlargement value valued at $100, which will cost me probably 5 to 10 bucks, than discounting $100 off my package. The client needs to have the satisfaction they have negotiated rather than you devaluate your services. It is very important. Always exceed the expectations, under promise and over deliver and you'll have better results. As a business owner, you need to be prepared for unhappy people. It is just a matter of time until someone is not happy. Make sure you're ready for it. I have seen many things in my life and I have learned not to judge people. I had modest people paying all my fees without any question and I had rich people coming down from a very expensive cars coming to my studio and trying to negotiate me down for five dollars. There is no rule. You need to treat everyone the same with respect. Try to expect the unexpected. I think that's enough for today and my best advice to you is try to get a bit of sales training. This can make a big difference in your success as a photographer. Try to detach yourself from your product. I know you love your photos. I do the same, but when I'm selling my photos, I treat them as a product, as a process, and that's basically the basic rule of a business. If you have a process and you can deliver the same product every time, that means you are a consistent business and is one of the conditions for your success. I hope you enjoyed this. I will probably talk about more selling techniques uh, one by one in future videos. If you liked it, just give us a thumb up. Do not forget to subscribe on the Academy of Photography website. And also, if you want to become a member, just check the uh, conditions. If you send us a few articles, you might get a chance to become a member of the Academy of Photography. We are already receiving a, a large number of articles and uh, photos for critics. Just have a look. If that's for you, I am happy to hear back from you. Thank you for watching. Until I see you next time, I wish you happy shooting.